this video will give you some hints on the Gamma project, specifically about questions five and eight. So the hint in this question five here talks about breaking the integral up into two integrals added together from zero to one and one to infinity. Uh, so I've done that, and I've also done a couple of other steps just to rewrite gamma of a half and get it into a slightly more friendly form. So pause the video here and see if you can get uh, gamma of one half to equal the stuff that's written up on the board here in blue, and then come back when you're ready. So if you're ready, we're going to focus first on the second integral that's written here. And we're going to look at that one over e to the t square root of t. And we're going to do a comparison here. Uh, so what I want to do is compare this thing to 1 over e to the t and decide whether it's smaller or greater. Um, so uh, in this interval between uh, t equals 1 and t equals infinity, square root of t is something bigger than 1. And so this denominator, this denominator here, is larger than this denominator, which means that the fraction is smaller. So I think we can say that. And then you can focus your attention on the integral uh, related to this 1 over e to the t. And then maybe uh, recognizing that this one right here is one of our useful integrals for comparison. And so hopefully uh, you get some result based on the UIC about this integral. And also hopefully this inequality is going in the helpful direction based on whatever the UIC tells you here. So that's all I'm going to say about the second integral. The first integral turns out to be a little bit trickier. Let's look over there. We'll play the same game, and we'll focus on the integrand. And it feels like maybe we can just do the same thing as before, right? Like just compare it to 1 over e to the t. It worked really well over there in red. OK, so let's think about this. Um, it feels like, again, you know, square root of t is, is some big number probably. And so that makes this denominator bigger than this denominator, which again puts a less than symbol in between. But not so fast. On the interval in question here, uh, this is t between 0 and 1. Uh, the square root of t is actually less than 1. For example, if you take the square root of 0.4, we'll get 0.2. That's not quite right. Let's try that again. Square root of 0.04, we will get 0.2. And so if t is 0.04, for example, which it could be because you're picking numbers for t just between 0 and 1 here. Uh, if you put t equals 0.04 right in there, then the square root of that is 0.2, which makes this denominator 0.2 of this denominator, which makes this denominator over here smaller, which makes the fraction bigger, which is not the direction that's helpful to us. We need uh, a less than symbol over here. So uh, all of the stuff that we did um, with this green, just didn't work. It doesn't, the inequality doesn't go in the useful direction. So let's try again. Uh, starting again with the integrand in question. But now this time we're going to compare not to 1 over e to the t, but rather to 1 over square root of t. And we know uh, that e to the t is always um, a positive number. And so that means that the denominator on the left hand side. This denominator right here, scratch that. It's more than e to the t being positive. It's that uh, as long as you are picking a t value at least 0, then e to the t is at least 1. That's the key right there. Uh, so if t is trapped between 0 and 1, then e to the t is trapped between e to the 0 and e to the first. Uh, I don't actually care about this side. But e to the t is at least 1. That means that this denominator is bigger than this denominator, which means that the first fraction is smaller than the second fraction. And that's the inequality that we're going to use. And so then you have to think about the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over square root of t. Turns out that is one of our useful integrals for comparison. I think you need to rewrite that uh, 1 over square root of t as t to a power first. But however you do it, put it into a form, which is one of our useful integrals for comparison. 
and then I think things will work out and this inequality is going to work in the right direction um, depending on the you know whether this integral here converges or diverges so I think that's all we're going to say about this problem and we're going to jump right on over to number eight and again the hint is to split into two integrals zero to one and one to infinity and I've done that and I've also rewritten it again in a little bit more of a friendly way so pause the video, see if you can get to this spot right here, and then come back. Okay, so if we're ready to proceed, I will say that one of these two integrals converges, and the other one diverges, blows up to infinity. And so ultimately, this is going to be something like infinity plus a finite number, and that's still equal to infinity. Um, you can figure out which one is which, and probably should write a little bit of that up um, in the project when you're doing your formal write-up. I'm going to focus in this video on this first integral, and I'm going to say that uh, this first integral right here only is worried about t values between 0 and 1, because, oh, I'm missing a dt here, because t is the variable for this integral, and t is trapped between 0 and 1. And so on that very specific interval where t is trapped between 0 and 1, um, I'm going to try to say some things about uh, this fraction right here. My ultimate goal is to trap this fraction between two specific numbers. So let's give that a shot. So uh, on that interval, zero to t, uh, zero to one, um, I'm going to um, uh, say that e to the t is definitely trapped between e to the zero and e to the first. We actually saw that on the previous problem sort of just like raising all three of these pieces to e, right, e to all three of those or something like that. And so uh, said another way, um, one is less than e to the t is less than e. And I'm still trying to build uh, this fraction right here. So I'm going to multiply all three pieces in this last inequality by t. So t is less than e to the t times t which is less than e times t. The reason I did that is to try to get us closer to this fraction. So I now have my denominator. Uh, and by the way, the inequalities don't change the direction, uh, don't change direction, because multiplying by t um, is multiplying by a positive number on this interval. t is definitely positive. OK, and now I think we're just one step away from the fraction. Uh, we need to do 1 over all three of these pieces in purple. So 1 over t. 1 over e to the t times t, and 1 over e times t. And we know that when we do 1 over, uh, all of the inequalities change direction. So there we go. So it might not be clear why that's a good thing just yet, but remember uh, the goal that I said was to trap that fraction between two other things, and we've done that. Our fraction is trapped between two other things. Okay, uh, so then I guess the next thing to consider would be the integral of the two outer things. The integral between 0 and 1 of the 1 over t, that's what we see on the left, and then the integral between 0 and 1 of the thing on the right, 1 over e times t. Now it turns out that, uh, so, so definitely our integral, uh, this integral right over here, that first one, is definitely trapped between our two green integrals, right? That's what the inequalities tell us. Um, and it turns out that one of those inequalities doesn't help us, but the other one does. And so your job is to figure out what's going on with these two integrals in green. Is this integral convergent to some finite number or is it divergent? Same thing over here. Is this integral convergent or divergent? I will say you should not be thrown off by the appearance of this e here. It is a constant. It does not have a t uh, on it. And so you can bring that e outside. Make sure you make it a fraction. It's 1 over e when you bring it outside. And so again, uh, one of these inequalities here is going to help you based on whether these integrals converge or diverge. So uh, once you found the one that helps you, you can just focus on that one and ignore the other one. Um, and again, like I said, uh, one of these two blue integrals up here is finite and the other one is infinite. All you need to do is get an infinite integral. Um, like I said, you can write a little bit about the other one being finite, but the key here is that one of them is infinity. So I think that's about all I'm going to say here about number eight. I hope that is helpful and good luck with the rest of this tough project.